I am now 20 years old, but my process of self-discovery began in my second year of sixth form. So I've been doing this for about three years now. It was very immensely difficult to grapple with the change of this life-altering decision, as I was dealing with it by myself, so no one around me knew. The perceptions and ideas of love are viewed through a very heterosexual lens within our society. The way love is viewed and formed, for example, within the media, is even, even for LGBTQ people, is through a heterosexual lens and is done to appease the heterosexual viewer. For example, the gay best friend trope. They are often used as a prop and to provide advice for the straight main lead. On a more personal level, though, living within Britain and being of Caribbean descent, um, non-standard forms of love, for example, being bisexual, is portrayed and met with negativity, stain, shame and stigma. There's a general attitude carried that it isn't discussed, non-standard non forms of sexuality. And if it is, it's met with derogatory language and discriminatory language. It creates an environment of hostility rather than one of acceptance and love. So it explains why I didn't want to <laughs> exactly disclose that information. Um, when I began my process of coming out, I did many online tests um, with the titles, am I bisexual, am I a lesbian, or some iteration of that. I scoured the internet, I did every test, read every blog and journal article, and at the time still had no more clarity for who I was. Um, looking back, however, uh, I now know that that information should have been the biggest sign, really. If you're doing the test, surely you have your answer. But honestly, seeing the dynamics of black LGBTQ love would have been so pertinent to my development and so crucial. Um, at the time, I was not able to trust my emotions. It's such a weird, indescribable feeling to not be able to trust who you are and whether your emotions, your emotions are real or not. I was never sure if I was bisexual or if I was faking it. Um, however, it all makes sense now looking back. It's growing up in white society and not being sure whether you're desirable. It's knowing at primary school age that your afro hair wasn't desirable. It's wanting to be light-skinned and hating the reflection you saw in the mirror because that's what society promotes to you. It's, it's attending PWIs, predominantly white institutions, playing silly games like snog my avoid with your white crushes and friends, and knowing what position you'll be put in, and then feeling more isolated for the rest of the day, and your friends never understanding why. It's not having romantic interests your way or reciprocated until sixth form. Of course I couldn't trust my own emotions. I'd never been desired by either gender throughout my entire life, up until sixth form. Along with doubt, one of the main feelings I felt in my process was fear. Fear of coming out to my family and friends. Especially since my family and I are quite close, so their perceptions of me were pretty clear, and they meant a lot to me as well. So being in that vulnerable with them and then being met with homophobia was something that I just could not bear. Um, before I decided to come out, I was an ally for the LGBT community, and I unabashedly fought for the LGBT community. However, this behavior was met with questions as to why I acted like this, why I didn't advocate for the black community in the same way. Or it was compared to the fact that with skin color, that is something that you cannot hide. It is there when you walk in a room, it's always present. However, with sexuality, that's hidden. No one will know that unless you reveal that information. The problem with this idea is that it ignores the intersectionality of it. It ignores the fact that people of colour do exist within the LGBT community. And when they walk in a the room, they are subject to dual discrimination and mistreatment. They are discriminated on the basis of race first and sexuality if revealed later. However, people do not tend to hide their sexuality unless they feel as it's unsafe to do so, as they're threatened by that. I think, however, if someone has someone who is in the LGBT community within their life, whether they know it or not, I think it is important to debunk the stereotypes and negative perceptions of being bisexual and in the LGBT community as a whole. Um, for example, the negative perception that black bisexual people are inherently more promiscuous or more likely to cheat on their partners, which we all know not to be true, I hope. <laughs> Another one is that our, perception, our attraction can be divided into percentages, which is not the case. And please stop asking or expecting us to pick a side. We cannot choose. That's the point. 
these perceptions that some may hold, someone may hold unintentionally could damage those around them and, un and hurt them even unintentionally. When I began my process of coming out, looking back throughout my entire life, I always felt like my perceptions of love and everything in between was never really the same as my friends. It didn't align with my friends. It always felt a bit more muted and more toned down. This is when I began to do more research in this area, and I found the term demisexuality on the internet. Now, this term is very new in the common sphere and public conscious, so there's very little representation. However, when I found this, I felt so validated. Demisexuality is on the spectrum of asexuality, and it's the notion that a sexual bond um, cannot commence unless someone feels an emotional component there first. Um, I related to this because I never understood uh, well, my generation's necessity to have non-committal sexual acts. It was just never something that I wanted to do. Um, the puzzle pieces were finally aligning within my life, and I felt validated, and I felt accepted, even within myself, before anyone knew. It was a very freeing feeling. Um, however, the more I thought about it, I felt more fluid in general with my perceptions of love. I didn't feel the need to create specific requirements for how my partner must act or look. Even when I tried to, it was very difficult and I struggled. I partially think this is because I didn't feel the need to rely on gender stereotypes, which can often be synonymous with straight relationships. Um, yeah. I am now, I am living in a Western country, as we know, Britain is one of those. And although my process has not been terribly bad because of being a Western country, we still have problems with the LGBT community. It is not, however, punishable by death, which is a very real case for some people across the world. So I'm very thankful for that not being something I have to worry about. However, in countries like Afghanistan, United Arab Emirates, and Nigeria, this is a very real reality for some people, as is familial abandonment. I did, however, experienced familial abandonment, and that did cross my mind when I was going through the process of coming out. I had many, many thoughts of how I would come out, how it would play out in my head, and each time I considered that I would have to go to friends and turn to friends for somewhere to stay. Um, yeah. The more time I spent figuring out what, what I want and who I am, I realized that I didn't need to feel the pressure to come out. It is not essential for anyone in the LGBT community to feel the need to do this. Um, I realized that my sexuality is still valid whether I came out or not. Whoever I told, even if it was no one, I still knew who I was, and that was all that really mattered. Okay. I think it's important to be aware of the dual identities that someone can face, being a black bisexual woman. Um, and there's many levels to this, from a, mac a micro to a macro level. For example, on the micro level, it's the unwanted sexualization and supposed entitlement to my body from men, simply by being a woman, contrasted with the undesirability of black skin and black features from white society. Um, it also has its unique set of challenges being a bisexual woman as opposed to being a bisexual man. Being a bisexual woman, I am often faced with the fetishization of dating women and lesbian relationships which makes it quite difficult. Um, however, being a bisexual man, you may experience toxic masculinity and the unwanted feminization of your character because you don't solely date women. Um, there's also the erasure of bisexuality, which can come in many forms. The first form being the, pre the presentation of heterosexuality, um, which is often the only way some people may be accepted by their family or friends if they present in a heterosexual relationship. For example, I am dating a man currently, and when I disclose I'm bisexual to people, they often ask me how that concept can work with a man and how it affects him. <laughs> um, another form of invalidation come in the concept of bi bisexual people being seen as greedy for not being able to pick one side. Um, yeah, not being able to pick one side or being more inherently promiscuous and more likely to cheat on their partner. However, this is my own personal experience. These words cannot be generalizable to the black community, the LGBT community, or a combination of the two. The words and events that were spoken to me 
cannot be compared, they cannot be duplicated. Um, and the impact they have on my character will last throughout my entire life. I truly think that everyone should absorb the words I have said today, understand that um, anyone can be carrying an immense weight on their shoulders that you may never have to experience because of the cards life dealt you, and that there could be an, a, an ongoing internal conflict for those around you. I, th I urge you all to understand that life is a constant lesson, and education is something that never stops, whether you're in an institution or not. It's something that's ongoing, that's constant and frequent, and that may, while you may think you know everything, you don't. <laughs> you probably never will. And I think it's important to understand that someone's perspective is completely different to yours. And it's always important to just be listening, listening and open to hearing what other people have to say. Because you don't know their life, it's completely different to yours. And it's not to take away from yours, but it's important to understand the different perspectives that people will experience within life. So if you want to aim to support anyone who's different to you, whatever the way it may be, race, gender, sexuality, listen. That is the only advice I can offer. Listen and be ready to experience that you will get things wrong. And that's OK. You can't know everything, but just shutting it down is not the way to progress. Education and listening will constantly be the way to do it. So, life is a constant lesson, and everyone should remember that as they go forward throughout their life. Thank you for listening to my talk. <laughs>